Hello and welcome. Brilliant British star John Hurt created some of cinema's most unforgettable screen characters in a career that took him from the theatres of England to the heights of Hollywood. His early film roles in the likes of Ten Rillington Place and A Man for All Seasons were but a foretaste of what he would deliver on both the small and big screen. Two television roles in particular catapulted him to international prominence. Firstly, portraying gay writer Quentin Crisp in The Naked Civil Servant. Then, as the cruel and crazy Roman Emperor Caligula in the television miniseries I, Claudius. He followed that with an unforgettable and moving performance as a horribly deformed human being in The Elephant Man. Then, the powerful drama Midnight Express and as a victim of the vicious predator in sci-fi epic Alien. In later years, John had the recurring role of the wand-maker Mr. Ollivander in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. But back in 1987, I had a quick chat with John at the Cannes Film Festival. He'd just finished the controversial sex-drenched film White Mischief in Africa with Charles Dance and Greta Skarke and From the Hip with American star Judd Nelson and a third unusual film called Aria in which ten famous movie directors, including Robert Altman, Bruce Beresford and Ken Russell, created ten short films, each an interpretation of a famous aria. Apart from this one, what, what other films have you got? Whoops, got in the bag. <laughs> Jesus. Got in the bag from the last, uh, or well, the can, as the case. Well, I've had a sort of strange couple of years. I've been doing, sort of doing bits and pieces. I can't say that I've got any what I would call a major piece. But, um... I did this, this year. Um, I did White Mischief as well. Right. Yes. Um, which is um, following the Chekhov's adage, there's no such thing as small parts, only small actors, you know. So, I mean, it, it's actually, it isn't a big part, but it is, it's a marvellous one. And I wanted to do it because Michael Rafford was directing it. Right. Charles and Dance, I, Greta Skarke. Charlie was in it, yeah. Right. And, and oh, Sarah Miles and... Trevor Howard. And, and that was shot where? In, in Kenya, I think. Right? Kenya in London. Yeah, Kenya in the shop. So what's, what's the basic story behind that? Mm. My mischief is, is it's, uh, I don't know if you ever read the book, you obviously haven't read the book. No. Um, it's a very journalistic book. It's particularly it's written by, uh, he's a journalist, so it's not surprising, by a guy called James Fox. And it's to do with the Happy Valley crowd in Kenya in the 1940s. It's sort of a British Raj sort of thing in, in Africa. Not really. No? no, it's much more decadent, much more willful, much more... Um, they were really a collection of real wastrels, really, aristocratic wastrels, really. Um, but lends itself fantastically to film because... Uh, much more than liter literature in a sense because they don't have anything great to say but they are, in terms of image interesting In the period's what, the 1940s so it's during the war? It's during, it, absolutely, when, when the world was fighting out this impossible and desperate situation there in Kenya with these aristocrats all behaving like a load of complete wallies, you know um, but I suppose if, if, if it means anything, everything is relative in a sense. It, it, it's, a, it's a marvelous subject for somebody like Radford to make. Yes. Did you ever see Another Time, Another Place? Yes, I did. Yes, and of course, then he went on to do. Uh, you know, I mean, he's very good at, at choosing a subject. I mean, Another Time, Another Place. What is it? Is it a wee Scots girl? falls in love with a mm. terrible shit of an Italian who's a, in a prisoner of war camp, you know, mm. and makes it into an incredibly moving story, and I think that he'll probably succeed with this one. And the character that you play is what sort of a guy? Colville is, uh, well, he's, he's, he was the richest man in Kenya. He went native, and the Maasai were in and out of his house all the time, and um, he was only tolerated by the rest of the crowd because he was of the same stock, as it were. He was, you know, he was high-born and um, therefore couldn't be ignored. So he's a, he's a bit of a bastard, is he, under the circumstances? But he, was, he was very taciturn. Yeah. He didn't, couldn't give a bugger about any of them. So and, um, an enjoyable role? I mean, a bit of health, meat, fantastic. meat, obviously. Yeah, it was. It was, terrific. it was terrific to play. I mean, in a sense, it's a kind of image of... of um, 
what you can do with your surroundings and what you can become. I mean, and, and he, he used Africa. I mean, he, he, whereas the others were playing in Africa, he he was part of Africa. <coughs> so, in, in a sense, he's an image. But it was it was it was great fun to do, and it was, was marvellous to work with Michael Radford again. You know. So, any others? Any American films? I did a film called From the Hip. Yeah. Yeah. With Judd Nelson? No, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too bad, it's not too bad. It didn't do too well, I'm afraid. I thought it would do better because I saw it and I thought, well, of its genre, I think it works rather well. It's quite funny. And the character you play in that one? Well, I play a sort of... Uh, he's a Boston University lecturer. And, uh, he's up for murder and quite palpably, deeply guilty. And, and Nelson plays the lawyer that... Uh... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, quite, it, honestly, it's quite an amusing movie. I don't, I don't think they sold it very well. It's right. same old yeah, It's on the list. It hasn't opened in Australia yet, but I think it's coming out in the next couple of months, so it's good. Was, it, was that a, a fairly easy movie, I suppose, in a sense? A bit of fun for you? Well, no, no, no movie's easy. You know, the more you do, the more difficult they become. Orson Welles, I think, put his finger on it. So I remember working with him in Man for All Seasons. He got to take 15, and he said, I never, I never begin to take 15. <laughs> so when you've made the amount of movies that I've made, you realize how hard it gets. You know what can go wrong. And you're always, I suppose you're always looking for something more to do, something more to bring to it. Well, you, anyway. you, you, also, you know what, you know, there's a million things can go wrong in the film, and uh, the more you do, the more you, you, you realise that. Yeah. It doesn't get easier. Yeah. And what about with this one, with, with Aria? I mean, the interesting thing is that nobody else here has seen the others. No, the only, only person who's seen, only director is Bill, who directed me in my bit. Right. Because he had to, because our bit links all the other bits. So have you seen all the other bits? No, I haven't. I haven't yeah, seen the film yet. No. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you were as sort of walking blind as much as the directors in the sort of well, general... No, not really, but not, not in that sense, because that's not what we were doing. I mean, we were... What we were doing is regardless of what else was happening. We knew, what, we knew that everybody was doing an imaginative piece to an hour. Fine. We also knew that we had to, our story has to be interrupted wherever it can be interrupted, wherever it's necessary. Um, but we knew exactly what we were making. But that was that was it. Ours, it's like a small film. Right, of course, yeah. It's a wee story. Yeah. Somebody said it was, it was the least commercial commercial break they'd seen in the... <laughs> Do you hear that, Bill? There was one comment Somebody said about Arbit. It's the least commercial, commercial break they've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> there was a comment yesterday, after the, or the day before yesterday, actually, after the screening of it. Sound the Oh dear, I hope that's not going to be the fact. You want to sing, you don't There's you? a woman yes. desperate, desperate to kill herself. A lovely bloke and brilliant actor. John was a recovered alcoholic and liked the odd Siggy or Ten, which you could hear in the gravelly tones of his voice. He married four times, was appointed Commander of the Order of the British Empire by the Queen in 2004 and Knight Bachelor of the Order of the British Empire in 2015. He died two years later at his home in Norfolk, England after a lengthy battle with pancreatic cancer. John was 77.